more frugal news. What is going on, guys? It is Adam, A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Tonight, we're going to be talking a whole range of subjects, so stick around. We'll be right back right after this. What is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Tonight is going to be loaded with different stories, so remember, you can actually follow along on marfugalnews.com, uh, and I'll show you that here in just a second, but first off, I just want to let you know this is a live show. Anything can happen. Uh, we normally have anywhere from 5,000 to 15,000 people watch live, so it's very important that you understand uh, this. Nothing in this show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of myself, Dex, or anyone else on the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. With that out of the way, uh, remember, we take the time before every single show to load up every single article, tweet, video that we show you here, including uh, additional content on our website, and we load up the sources and kind of a bibliography of sorts on our website. Now, now, when you go, it's very easy to navigate. You'll actually find tonight's thumbnail. And when you see it, you can click on Do Mountain instead of Mountain Dew, obviously. And then when you get there, you'll see that all of the articles from tonight are actually backed up, archived, and you can follow along on a second device. So if you have a second phone or tablet, you can actually read along or read ahead or read behind. Uh, again, all everything is here, and then if you do want to support us in any way, on the right side of the page is all of our affiliates uh, slash kind of donation routes that you can take, PayPal, which being the best. Uh, Army, Special Forces, uh, China Bands, BBC, everything on here is going to be there so you know exactly where your news is coming from. With that out of the way, let's introduce Dex. Dex is my co-host slash internet brother. He'll also be manning the phones at 2244 marf Again, that later on on that black line we'll scroll through it is 2244006273 just in case you don't have a phone with letters on it uh dex how are you doing tonight and what is going on oh well, hello adam and hello fugal fam doing really well so just to remind everyone as well on the website marfuglenews.com not only can you sign up for our special email alerts uh, it's kind of our shtf uh, alert system slash newsletter slash everything uh, that we kind of send you would be through that system we don't blitz uh, in fact we've been a, on average about once a month sending something out uh, we we want that system to be valuable and that we don't want to send you something that you're just like oh this is a daily um, you know hey Dan what's going on we don't do that uh, you can go and also get notifications for our show directly from us push notifications so if any of these platforms are not giving you them you can get ours from us directly so again remember that because it is important uh, if you are not subscribed make sure to do so right now because obviously it's freaking sweet and second of all if you think you're subscribed make sure to check below to see if you are still subscribed as you know, there's a lot going on with the platforms. All right, we're going to get straight into the news, and then I'm going to head over to the chat. The live chat is always popping. Uh, make sure to thank your mods for making it a safe and awesome place down there. Northup Grumman reveals its, quote, long shot air launched missile toting drone concept. We have uh, covered a lot of this, and all of a sudden, it's just kind of exploded uh, in the last year and a half of all of the drone technology they're using for military warfare. And it just seems like it is uh, kind of coincidental that in the last couple years, they kind of cleared the way to get rid of uh, most of the hobbyist drone flyers, right? Because uh, someone like me who has a, a Mavic and, and puts mine up for cinematic video... Uh, they, it's going to be a lot harder for me in the near future. And I'm talking like r real near. Uh, they're changing all of the laws. They're making it harder for a regular person just to put a drone up. Uh, you have to get an actual uh, pilot's license or a, 
go through basically the same, almost the same thing that you would unless if you were actually getting a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a pilot's license. Um, and then they are making it a a lot more restricted as far as where you can fly. So, you know, it's always been kind of iffy about where you can fly because the maps on some of the drones don't match the legal ones. Uh, so it's going to get even crazier. And I just think it's coincidental that, of course, now they're going to be kicking in the government using a ton more of these. And we're talking about above us. If you're in Europe or Australia or Japan or wherever you're actually watching from, you're going to see regular drones above you watching you. Uh, this is a privacy concern, obviously, uh, but this is something that they are kind of clearing the way for. On top of that, they are using these things for, you know, nefarious reasons uh, as far as military goes. And the reason why is because all of the other countries, and including our enemies, they are too. Uh, it, this is North of Grumman. Again, uh, one of uh, the companies we've talked about many times, we've talked about Boeing, we talked about Raytheon, these are all like super big, top secretive uh, companies in the top tiers of these, you know, uh, creations that they make. They're some pretty scary stuff, including which <laughs> a DARPA, DARPA is another one, uh, DARPA program is seeking drone concepts that can help extend the range of friendly aircraft and make them less vulnerable in aerial engage engagements. So remember, we've actually covered, you know, say the the wingman or the 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 now the new flying ace, right? Uh, kind of like Top Gun, right? The the new flying ace will actually have a drone beside him instead of a wingman. Uh, in fact, that is the future. In fact, the future would be no human beings actually flying, and it will just be drones. Uh, but now they are testing all of these kind of partner planes, partner uh, drones. So say if you know, I'm a pilot and I'm flying into hostile territory, I would have my wingman slash drone slash unmanned aerial vehicle go up ahead of me, scout things out, and even be able to engage before I even get within range of their, you know, their kind of systems. That is what is the, the future is going to have. And of course, uh, people worry that these things will be patrolling our skies very soon uh, and including, you know, having deployments here in our countries. And I mean all of them. It says Northrop Grumman has unveiled concept art of its proposal for the U.S. military's long shot program, which can uh, read about and more in the recent war zone piece. It says the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency otherwise known as SCARY, I mean DARPA, announced it had awarded contracts to three companies as part of a long shot. It says the goal of which is to explore designs for an air-launched aerial combat drone that carries its own air-to-air -air missiles. It says the idea of this system that would extend the reach of the launching aircraft while reducing the vulnerability to the enemy, uh, as well as offer a number of potential benefits. The Virginia headquartered defense contractor revealed that the artist's conception of its long shot drone as part of a press release uh, two days earlier, DARPA had announced that Northrop Grumman, as well as General Atomics, another company that we talk about, and Lockheed Martin, I forgot about that one, had received contracts worth unspecified amounts. I love how they say unspecified amounts. We have no idea what kind of, you know, underground money is going into these things. And usually they, you know, say, hey, it was a $3.27 million contract. Obviously, it's so much that they unspecified it. They didn't even want to tell you how much money they're spending on this. Which also brings me to the point, well, if, if we can't see how much is being spent, we have no idea if they're making tens of thousands of them and getting ready for a conflict. Is it, Does that make sense? Like, Dex, I don't know if you think the same, but if they don't tell us how much money they're spending, that would also, could be a sign that they are spending a whole lot more, uh, and if that number came up and it was public, go, well, how, you know, why are you spending, you know, $6 trillion on these things? Uh, just for readiness. This sounds like, you know, they might be getting ready for something a lot bigger than just readiness. Absolutely. You know, and the more, it doesn't surprise me that, that they were not going to tell us what they spend, especially on a project like this where they want to sort of hide the number. Exactly. I mean, they're, they're, they're hiding the amount. So that's a kind of a big deal there. And it says to craft these long shot air vehicles. This is kind of the art artist conceptual uh, thing of this. So if you do see one of these flying above you or above California or any of one of the sites, 
you might know what it is. It kind of looks like a boat with wings with gigantic uh, missiles. Those are huge. I don't know how big this thing is, though, but by the other photos of it, it looks like it's about the same size as a jet. Look at this thing. It looks like something from the 50s, does it not? Like a like a futuristic plane that was drawn back in the 50s and, you know, now, of course, looks silly. This thing looks like a boat. It literally looks like a yacht with the top cut off. Uh, very, very odd. It says, overall, this particular design seems more consistent with a number of loyal wingman-type drones that various offer, uh, various companies offer ha and have in different stages of development. That's exactly what we were talking about. These wingman company, uh, these wingman drones. And it says, it has a number of very general similarities, including a V-tail and a top-mounted air intake uh, to Kratos XQ-58 uh, Valkyrie, which we've covered here on the show. It says the U.S. Air Force is currently conducting tests seeking to develop a suite of artificial... And Sorry about that. That's totally cut off. As part of its Skyborg program. I mean, really? They called it the spot Skyborg program. They put Borg right in the name it's like the you know on top of uh what what is it um why don't they just call it like the terminator uh true you know real future program it says which is seeking to develop a suite of artificial intelligence driven systems capable of operating loyal wingman drones and fully autonomous unmanned combat air vehicles or ucavs they put borg the Borg in an artificial intelligence uh, named plane. I mean, come on. It says, in December 2020, Kratos uh, got a contract to design a drone to carry the Sky Borg systems. Northrop Grumman has received a contract to develop co components for the Sky Borg uh, program. This is, of course, the Valkry f uh, flight. You can watch this video of, of what it looks like. It doesn't even look like it can fly, to be honest. When you, when you look at the shape of the thing... It looks like a, a children's toy or something, but apparently it is incredibly, incredibly advanced. Either way, uh, I'm going to go over to the chat. Thank you guys all for being here. Uh, we have Jay Pencil. What's going on? Uh, we have Eunice Cycleman. Hey, how are you doing? Johnson, thank you so much for being here. Love. Ren uh, resonance love for the fugal fam kelly 2334 we've missed you hey thank you and welcome uh again gone girl triple seven much love fugal fam much love marf decks and mods thank you gone girl thank you for being here uh, again thank you thank you and thank you all for for coming tonight force of nature we've got hexagonal peach cutthroat mom scooby-doo do right one on b uh tall drink of water one adam 12 i love it what is going down Cat Jones, hey, how are you? Catnap, is that catnap? Man, my eyes are going bad. Uh, Canlap, Canlap, Carlap, says smile, be kind. Did I see smile, be kind and rewind? Uh, be the change you want to see, says angry Mimi. I love you. The name is Angry Mimi and, and such a positive message. Uh, Badger Babe, hello cyber family, Adam and Mrs. Marf and Dex. Uh, is Mrs. Marf in here yet? I don't know if she is. Uh, her mom's actually over, so they're having fun up there. Zippy Moons, thank you so much for your massive support tonight. I appreciate the Ninjagini. And Honja2005, Akarushi. Lots of new names as well that I've, I've seen. Cactus Patch Girl, thank you for being here. Jumpmaster, Serenity PA. I don't know if it was you that said hi in Dutch Sense's uh, live stream earlier, but I did see Mama of Six. Uh, I saw several of the old school... Uh, Fugal fam like Doug N and such others that have been around for three years. Tower Bear, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't, check out his uh, premiere that that uh, actually aired earlier, talking about, of course, the updates since the 7.7 .7 earthquake. If I go to get earthquake information, I go over to Dutch Hints because I trust him more than I do uh, a lot of the other sources around. Uh, Charouncil, Philly Poo, Unicorn Forest, Batriska, Nosdick, Mystic Misfit. Thank you. Um, I, the reason I trust Dutch Sense too is because, uh, again, he has a really good track record. And I have seen things that have been hidden, wrote about him, about how accurate he actually was and how accurate his predictions were. And then at that one point, after I want to say the whole country of NZ 
I, I think it was NZ that went after him uh, because he basically, I, I think that one of his predictions said something and then a bunch of people on the island kind of freaked out. I think that even the prediction about that ended up being right. Or he said something about NZ's, uh, you know, kind of equivalent of USGS. Whatever it was, they started like a total, you know, uh, campaign against him and it was really bad. So I, I stuck up for him and several others did and I hope that you guys did as well. We have Army Special Forces wants lasers to shoot down drones. Of course we do, because the other guys are going to have it. Now, this is a fake picture. I love how they used a uh, kind of a DJI Mavic 2 as the uh, the thing. This is what a, a normal hobbyist would have, or even a sheriff's department if they were doing search and rescue. Uh, they do have the Enterprise model. But imagine something this size and probably about this big. Not only, uh, you know, them shooting them down, but these things actually having, uh, you know, basically uh, offensive hardware on them. Uh, you're talking about the, the movie Songbird. If you saw that movie, uh, n no spoilers, but there's a scene where a drone actually has a, a weapon on it and it takes out somebody. That is the future. That is not an exaggeration. That is a direct, it's not even a prediction. It is just very early for its time, I guess. Not even early. It's going to be in the next few years that we are going to see a ton of these. And just over the last year, we've seen the technology go to the point where we are going to see, uh, you know, we're talking about big hardware on big drones flying above us. Police forces have them already. Um, you're talking about now they're passing all the laws. They're, they're getting the framework down to have a certain part of the sky for these enforcers. And that's what I heard that they were going to be called, enforcers. That's freaky if you ask me. But again, um, right now it's only kind of at the uh, the rumor stage of, of how vicious these things could be. And if they are controlled by police, they could take action. And now they, I think they, the, the one thing that they're trying to do is trying to figure out the legalities of it. And so, so say if a, uh, you know, say if a police officer does something in the line of duty, uh, they have a procedure for that. Well, what if one was actually controlling a drone via a controller and does something and takes somebody's, you know, they perish. That is, uh, that's also something that they have to kind of get the framework down for. And this is something that will be in our future. And I mean, super, super near future. It says the so army. I get the. Go ahead. Hey, Adam. Sorry. I get the whole idea of, of like using them from the ground up to the drone. I'm, I'm just, and I know obviously you're talking about the future, but I'm just thinking to myself, like what kind of battery life would this thing have if it actually had to power, you know, a, a laser on it? To, to go from the sky to the ground, right? And I know that's not what we're talking about here. No, no, this, no. But just, just when you think about it, that's that's a lot, right? Well, so no, now the, the, the battery technology, and this is something I followed on the side because almost nobody follows the kind of stuff that goes into this. You have to follow kind of the components, and it is in such like a side nerd world is if you follow the, the battery kind of companies and, and how they are miniaturizing uh, lithium ion and, and other kinds of batteries they're making technology to where they can fit kind of a cell phone size battery that could power one of these for an entire day that wasn't possible just a couple years ago that wasn't possible six months ago I, I don't think and uh, I don't think that the public even knows about how how strong these things can the cool thing about lasers though is that technology has actually come down a lot too you need a lot less power uh, and they can actually put out a, a much, much stronger uh, signal. If you think about it, there was one even a couple of years ago that was kind of like, you know, this size, right? This is a little lightsaber piece, but it was about that size, and it was actually strong enough to burn through things, and the battery that was in it was even smaller. Now they have stuff that, you know, you're talking about, uh, about the size of this is on a ship, on uh, Navy ships that can actually take down a plane. So this is what they're talking about, the, the lasers to actually take them down as well because this is going to be a threat. And you're going to see these lasers all over the country. Is that not freaky? Instead of anti-air, uh, you know, big, huge, you know, 50 cal or whatever, they, you know, caliber stuff they use, they'll be using lasers. 
<clears throat> it says the Army wants to protect special forces operators from unmanned aerial systems, known uh, better as drones. It says by shooting them out of the sky with high-energy weapons, better known as lasers. It says the Army Rapid Capabilities Critical Technologies Office added a new section to its broad agency announcement vehicle for cutting-edge technologies, putting out a call under, quote, counter un unmanned aerial system high-energy laser. And I don't know why they they messed up on that laster. And it says the, quote, primary opportunity and purpose of this effort is to integrate a government-owned high-energy laser subsystem with a power and a th thermal subsystem and sensor package to demonstrate increased lethality. And notice they use that word, increased lethality, in negating uh, SUAS. Now... That's, yeah, okay, and they say this is for military use, right? Here's the thing. They are clearing the way, and they are getting this together to where these could be on city streets later down the road. And this could all go into an AI kind of policing system that would, you know, end up going in the future. Notice how they are kind of telling us that the human police are so imperfect that we don't want them anymore. Do you think that community policing or whatever would take its place no guess what they're gonna put it out and it's going going to be a saving grace and just like every sci-fi movie and it's so scary to think about that it's no longer going to be sci-fi in, in a few years talking about replacing human police with cyber police you're talking about robots and ai and if you don't think that's happening you need to follow what is going on with ai and physical robots and even humanoid robots you're talking about uh, a perfect system, right? If it sees a crime, it goes through its memory banks, it knows that that's a crime, it doesn't happen. And you as a human know that if you step out of place with all of the surveillance, the second you step out of place, you are punished or you are uh, or basically taken in or tracked with a drone, whatever it may be. This is going to be everywhere. And that, to me, is very scary. We are in a generation where, like they said, uh, there's a famous famous quote going around. You will own nothing and you will be happy. Saying of the future. And I don't know how they think we're going to be happy. Maybe it's because our brains will be trained in that way. But I don't think I will be. Again, this is going to be our world. And not in 40 years from now. Not in 30 years. Not in, in 20 years. This is 10 or less. Is that not freaky or what? Machina Opus, beware the alien, the mutant, and the heretic. Hey, how are you doing, Machina Opus? Thank you so much for being here. Angry Mimi, be excellent to one another. Awesome, awesome message. And Gone Girl, thank you for the hearts and prayers. d -Lob's mom, hey, how are you doing? I hope you are doing good. Thank you for your support. You know you don't have to do that. And uh, Video925, I haven't seen you here before. Thank you for the lemons. But what do you guys think about this? I'm going to go over to the chat. What do you think about these drones flying above us, having AI and being kind of loaded up? Rebecca Pina over on YouTube says, I agree. What's going on? Alish, Alish is here. Hey, how are you doing? Ed Brown, what is going on? We've got Patty Mabel, Steve-O from NZ, uh, Tall Drink of Water, Elon trying to implant humans. I mean, think about what is going on. He says that he's combating it by making us more uh, connected with computers, that he's actually trying to battle the uh, the oncoming onset of AI. He says he fears AI more than anything else. People laugh at this. People don't even pay attention to this. They, they, they don't feel it's important yet, especially if you get into some of the people that are not in the cities. Uh, they don't see anything changing in their daily life. But think about this. Even in the, the podunk towns of today... And I mean, you know, out in, the, out in the sticks, out in the country where it's peaceful and you don't see a lot of this technology. You don't see uh, palm prints. Uh, like, in fact, locally here, the Amazon stores now have palm reading technology. So you walk in the store, it re you have a little pad that you walk up to, almost like a train station, and it scans your palm. You don't see that out in the country. In fact, you don't see much of any. I mean, you don't see posts with four cameras or these temperature gauges that are going in in places like airports you don't see that in the in the tomorrow they are going to make sure that it is a convenience and it is something that is required and and even going to help you and save you to have these things everywhere and not to mention 
they are expanding so fast that the country isn't going to exist in just a matter of a couple decades if we can even make it that far. That's my opinion. What is yours? Uh, Gone Girl, again, they want to move everybody into centers, and they're telling us this. That's not some crazy thing on the, the, you know, the corners of the internet. That's real. They, they have plans, and they're, they're public. It's, it's uh, A-G-E-N-D-A-3-0. Uh, Go read it. It's pretty scary stuff. Chaos 4132, Lisa K. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Uh, over on YouTube, Dirty Skies California says, What's up, fam? Red in California here. It's up to God, Marf, says Joe Adams. I, I agree as well. I, you've got to put faith in just that everything's going to go okay. And, and uh, again, that's something that I want to let people know as well. Uh, let's see here. I hope not in the middle of nowhere, says Dolores. Meet George Jetson. Who was that? His boy Elroy, Ronda F. Yes, the Jetsons is not too far off. Uh, Dubai is actually going to have flying taxis and all sorts of stuff. So we'll see. Uh, again, chosen vendors will be given two Army-owned high-energy laser weapon systems and two surveillance radar systems to develop into working counter-drone systems, including designing, integrating, prototyping, and delivering working systems. This is all to start once military gets it, then in just a couple of years, we will have it on our city streets. That is my prediction. And then, of course, we have China bans BBC for fake news on Xinjiang CV. Wow, BBC got knocked down, huh? That is pretty, pretty crazy. Okay, let's see here. Uh, it says, Chinese authorities banned the BBC on Thursday, accusing the British broadcaster of not being, quote, factual and fair, according to the government statement. It says a decision was the result of, quote, a slew of falsified reporting on issues including the Xinjiang, Xinjiang uh, region and China's handling of CV. State media Global Times adding that fake news is not tolerated. To tolerated. Tolerated. Uh, by the way, if you're new, if I make a mistake, I point it out and uh, get awkward. Super awkward. Too long? Probably. While the BBC was not available in most Chinese households, the ban suggests it will no longer be streamed in any venues such as hotels. Wow. I'm actually surprised about that. Says the move came... I wonder... Week. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, the, this could just be exactly what they're saying. Right. And we could just take the narrative and, and move on. But we should watch and see. I don't know what other networks are broadcast from uh, the Western side over into uh, into China. But if we see others getting knocked off, think about some of the precursor activities you do before conflict. Right. And being able to remove some of that outside communication. That would be one of them, especially a news broadcast coming from the other side. I mean, it, it just it, it, it seems to me like. Oh, you know what's even funnier, uh, Dex, is I have my my aunt and my two cousins, her, her two daughters, um, they believe that they are totally informed because that when you say, well, you, you know, you can't watch media and they go, well, we don't watch the normal news. We watch BBC. They think that they are watching the fair and balanced news. BBC uh, was pretty dry and pretty d different a few years ago, but... Um, but BBC now is just three letters just replaced with three other letters. I mean, it's just like the other ones. I think somebody even said that in chat, that it's like the C to the double N. Uh, it's just not, it's not the same. And, and they have so much opinion. The thing is, is, you know, people say that, you know, news is supposed to be opinion free. It's been a decade since that's been the case. But I mean, it, it, it was never that way. But now it is all opinion. It's not even factual reporting anymore, in my opinion. But, and that's my opinion. And I'm going to opinionate this news. But do you guys agree? Uh, do, do you guys agree? Do you think that there is a unbiased news source? And I mean unbiased. You can't say, uh, you can't say Sky 
uh, Sky News in Australia. A lot of people give that as an example. You can't say BBC. You can't say any of the big ones. Uh, but you also can't say uh, what was the the example that everybody gives. Um, uh, Newsmax or something like that. You can't say those because they're totally they're going for something too. They're they're taking a jab and grabbing all of the scraps from you know all of these other networks that aren't covering stuff. But they're not unbiased. There is no such thing anymore. Not there's nothing. Uh, let's see here. I'm not unbiased either. No, I'm not unbiased. I, I am. It, it comes out because I'm a human being. And guess what? It, that's the thing. When they claim to be unbiased and they are, that's what it kind of makes people mad. It's like, don't say you're unbiased and trying to bring you just the truth, right? There's there's nobody that can. You're not allowed to. If you were bringing all the truth, you wouldn't be anywhere anywhere could uh, people could see you. Do you see what I mean? You can try, uh, the, you know, you have to go with basically code. We need some sort of Morris code or something. We need to like, f you know, put a white piece of paper and do Morris code for the real stuff. Uh, that's why we have additional content on our website. By the way, go over. You'll see that there's a bunch of stories that we have compiled for you down below. Make sure to check that out. You can go to marfuglenews.com uh, right after this and go to tonight's show and you'll see there's a bunch of uh, spicy, spicy uh, spaghetti over there. All right. And then if you want to support us in a different way, I highly, highly recommend this. And again, we have shown you all of the evidence of why you should be looking in to protect yourself against an EMP. We have shown you what is going on in different countries. And we have also shown you uh, how the government is preparing for this. Uh, EMP Shield is not only a device that can ground the signal before it fries your devices. It is uh, actually multifaceted. They have many devices that can protect all sorts of things. Their most popular is their card version, which you can actually wire in yourself in five minutes. It's about three wires and click, click, you're done. Uh, as far as the house, they have a generator model. They have a motorcycle model. They have a boat model. They even have a ham radio model. They have a solar system model. Again, make sure to do this because it can actually protect you against all three phases of an EMP, E1, E2, and E3, and it can protect you against solar flare uh, protection up to 228,000 amps. So if there was another Carrington event. On top of that, these guys are legit. This is Keystone tested, military grade, and... They are currently contracted with different three-letter agencies. They've worked with DHS, Department of Homeland Security, who let us uh, know that every American should have six months to a year of food just in case one of these happens. And they've worked with DOD, and now they're officially on the Dempso team helping protect the Texas grid. So again, all of this, you can get protected by going to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. On top of that, there is a contest. If you don't have the funds to get one outright, I would hope that you would at least try to go over and do multiple ways to enter the contest that's going on right now. In fact, if you win, you can actually pick which device. That is always cool because if you, you, maybe you don't have a home, you have an apartment. So you pick the car model. Again, go to marfuglenews.com slash contest. Very easy easy to enter you just have to go a couple places like a couple places maybe subscribe a couple places and then boom you're done and entered and you can do it daily all right go to marfuglenews.com slash contest if you want to do that and marfuglenews.com slash vpn if you just want to get yours now part of the proceeds go to helping the channel not only that you actually get a cheaper cost you get fifty dollars off per device when you buy multiples all right and uh let's see here uh, let's get into our phone system. Remember, the number is 2244 marf uh, That's again, 2244-00-6273. Uh, first, we have Susie P., first-time caller, and thoughts on the moons over Dubai. And we actually have some sort of link here, so let me get on to that. And then Dex, we'll get Su uh, Susie P., I'm assuming I'm... It's spelled Suzzy P, but I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that right. And let's see. And meanwhile, I'll go over to the chat and pop over. Uh, thank you, Wong He Wong Fi Hung. Is that really Wong Fi Hung? Thank you so much. I ho hope I didn't, uh, you know, totally butcher that. Barbecue ready. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Mark. Hey, how are you doing? Susie P, you are live on Marfugal News. 
I'm doing well. Um, you know, the the past, I guess, week, you've had several, like, two other callers talk about the triangle. Um, uh, the triangle up in the sky that had the three lights on it, the three red lights. Well, when I saw the, um, the Dubai planet with um, the cranes, the cranes... If you put, if you make them a triangle and put lights on each corner, that is the triangle that it looks like. I saw it in January of 2019. Um, uh, um, we have the um, golf tournament here, and it was one of the nights of the golf tournament. No, no, no. So wait, let me but, get let me get this straight. What do you what do you mean by you take this picture and you and you draw a triangle? Is it what what do you mean? Okay, you see the the cranes. If you make a triangle from the the black cranes, that is what the corners look like. Um, I mean, at night they're black, so all you see is you see the they look. The triangle looks like those cranes with the red light on each corner. And then in the center is, it's like, um, it's like a mirror screen. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the cloak from, um, the, um, the, the, the magical cloak. Yes. On, uh, Harry Potter. Um, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, I get okay, what you're saying. That's what it looked like in the center. Um, I did not see planets when I saw it, but I saw that um, that mirror image, and all you see through it is stars. All you can see is the is the outline and and the three corners of light. Now, just to, to make sure I mean, that has, make sure that everybody's on the same page here, Susie P. What she is saying is it's, she didn't see the the planets, but this when she saw this picture, she goes, "That's what it looked like." What she saw is that right? Am I am I getting you? And that yes. same kind of black, yeah, with the two lights on the corners. When she saw that, it immediately triggered her to say, "That's what I saw." Only, you know, in that triangle form with a mirror in the middle, with a cloak, she could see right through it to see the stars. That's what everybody is reporting. Yeah. Yes. That is what I saw. That is very creepy. And when, when was this, by the way? This was January of 2019. Um, and it was during the week of the, the Phoenix Golf Tournament. Oh, and you're in Phoenix. You, of course, have had the Phoenix lights yes. there in the past, which the entire town, including uh, respected people in Phoenix, actually said that they saw this gigantic mile-wide uh, triangle fly over silently. Very creepy stuff. If you haven't looked into yeah. the Phoenix Lights, it's very creepy. Well, Susie P., thank you for the sighting and thank you for the info. Is there one more thing you want to say before you go? Um, no, I just appreciate your show. I haven't been a, a member long, but um, it's nice to, to uh, be with like-minded people. That's exactly and, why I think and, we've done well. Because you know, nobody believes me. When you when you tell people what you've seen, they they look at you differently. And it's nice to be with people who believe you, but they understand what you're what you're seeing. Well, because there's a lot of people here that have seen the same thing, and of course they can't. If they say something about it at work, you'll get an you'll get an eval. They'll say, "Hey, we want you to talk to uh, we want you to talk to Dana in uh, in HR." Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Uh -huh, exactly. Yeah, well, it's not, it's yeah. not, it's totally normal to to have seen stuff. I've seen stuff, and that's why you know everybody is coming here because everybody is the same way. We we are all open minded, and we want to know what's actually going on. And none of us believe what's actually being said. So obviously, you know, anything could be possible. Yes, exactly. 
especially after stunts like this one. Well, thank you, Susie P. Uh, it was nice to have you. It's your first time call. Don't make it your last. Don't be a stranger. And it was so nice meeting you, and I'm so glad that you found my channel. Yes, thank you so much. I really do appreciate the, the um, news and, and, and the real news. Well, Susie P., you have a great night. Be safe, be prepared, and Marf out. That was Susie P., and uh, great call. Again, you know, do you feel like you have a story that you wouldn't tell people at work? Do you, uh, do you have a story that you feel like just, you know, people would look at you like you're crazy? Uh, I, I often feel like that when I'm talking to my friends. I have one of my best friends, uh, you know, Jack. I, I told him, tell him stuff, but he always has this skepticism about him where he, you know, he, he wants to debunk everything I'm saying or look into it or it's just, it's, it's natural for him. Um, and I, I totally get that, you know, but it's like sometimes it, I guess it's because of the amount that we are looking into this stuff that it just, once you hear person after person confirm it in their own words, it's like, it's pretty hard to deny that there's something else out there. Uh, let's see. And remember, the number to call in, if you want to call in just like Susie P, the number is 2244-006273. That's again, 2244-00-MARF. Uh, we still have a line open. If you want to get in, this would be the time. End times with two Zs. Zzz. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Uh, over on YouTube, uh, Jessica, Jessica with a G, uh, thank you from Canada for the $10 support there. Tiffany Green, thank you for subscribing. Uh, as always, if you subscribe during the live show, you will get a shout out. Nikki Carl's inspiring speaker has subscribed. Uh, I love it. Nikki, I would love to check check out your inspiring speeches. Uh, Ed Brown, thank you so much. Gunpowder Productions says drones are controlled by frequencies. Frequencies can be jammed and using an, a directional antenna, you can disable it. Gunpowder Productions, it looks like you've probably, uh, you're probably, uh, you probably looked into that, didn't you? Uh, you're probably on the same list all of us are. <laughs> Ho Operator says, uh, look at the new Kawasaki High Speed AI drone. Um, Ho Operator, I will definitely look at that. Uh, that sounds completely fascinating. I thought I was up on all the drone stuff, but... Apparently, uh, I missed one. The Remaining Remnant. I did see you over on Dutch Sense. It says, yes, Adam, it was me, Serenity PA. Much love to your family. Remaining Remnant. It is so nice that you are still here after this much uh, after this much time. Really, you've been here now years. Uh, Brian Paddock says, hey, Adam, what you do is very special, and you are walking with the Lord. Thank you so much for e with everything. Brian Paddock Thank you. That is really, really nice of you to say and bless you. And thank you for that. And thank you for the well wishes for my family as well. Uh, Aloha from Hawaii, says Rhiannon S. Hope you and your family is doing well. Thanks to you, Dex, and Mods for all you do. Lori D., Dex needs a camera so we know he's not a cat. That's right. Uh, that was the last person out last night. Lori D., thank you so much uh, for your support over on YouTube. And thanks for closing us down last night. All right, and then getting back into it from icy Texas to snowy Seattle. Frigid weather blankets huge swath of U.S. Now, this is something I'm feeling. In fact, my when it gets this cold, and so when you walk from hot to cold to hot to cold, I get dry lips. I mean, I just, my, uh, I, it just, oh, I hate cold, cold weather. Um, I hate hot, hot weather. That's, I guess, why, you know, I guess I it's because I grew up in Seattle. We just have the middle all year round. It's like gray and just crappy. But I guess I've gotten accustomed to that because when it's super cold and snowy and, you know, crappy like this, I hate it. Uh, but apparently the entire country is going to hate it this year because all 50 states uh, at some point are going to go down to freezing temperatures, which is weird. We're talking about Las Vegas and, and uh, you know, we're talking about Nevada. We're talking about Co Colorado. All these different places are supposed to hit freezing. There is definitely something going on with our weather. 
Uh, it says February 11th, winter weather battered the United States from coast to coast on Thursday as a series of storms expected to last for days mixed with an Arctic air mass to bring snow and freezing rain as far south as Texas, where there was a deadly multi-vehicle pileup. Now, if you didn't see that, of course, Texas had a 132 car pileup. In fact, they are still, I don't know if, if they have... Uh, completely even cleaned it up they say it's not even going to be cleaned up until tomorrow morning this thing was absolutely horrid i don't encourage anybody to watch the video i don't see what the purpose of watching the different videos but there's many different angles of semi trucks just crushing you know big rigs like you know we have a, a eight seater uh, an eight seater uh suv and you see it just getting crushed like it's pancakes i mean just whoosh and I think, man, if that was me and my family in there, like, think about that. Think about if there's, you know, if I had my three kids, uh, my little ones, and my big one, and so we have six people and just, that's scary. That is, like, disturbingly scary. And the video makes it look like it's just nothing. And these were big SUVs that were just getting crumpled. Uh, that's how fast these guys were going, and it was all ice. And it's in the places like this where they don't have this kind of cold or at least they don't have uh, this kind of thing happen so often that people don't know how to drive. People are driving fast and don't realize that there's black ice or whatever it may have been. This was really bad because you see one after another after another after another. It's like these people in slow-mo had this horrible accident. Really bad. So please be careful out there. Fugle fam, when you're driving just go on the safer side. If somebody's behind you, don't worry about them. Go the speed you want to go and just say, screw it. I mean, like, it's not worth your life. It says a line of freezing rain stretched from Texas to West Virginia with some of it accumulating on one quarter of a one half inch, according to meteorologist Mark Chenard at the National Weather Service's Weather Prediction Center in College Park, Maryland. Among the areas to get a coating of freezing rain during the Thursday morning rush hour was Fort Worth, Texas, where local media reported that at least five people, and now I believe it's above six, were uh, taken and perished in a massive pileup of some 70 vehicles. Uh, by the way, this has now been updated to over 132 vehicles, some of which were so smashed they were still trying to recover people. And I mean recover, not save uh, or rescue. It says, video at the scene showed dozens of smashed cars and trucks, some literally piled on top of one another on a wet roadway and under cloudy skies. It says the Texas precipitation was part of a system that was bringing rain to several southwestern or southeastern states and modest amounts of snow to West Virginia, Maryland, and New Jersey, but was winding down, Chenard said. A separate system will make the presence felt in the mid-Atlantic area on Saturday, he said. Quote, that may bring potentially significant freezing rain accumulations, 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 <laughs> to portions of Virginia and Maryland, he added. Awkward enough. But on a, a really, really bad one, though, I mean, that is just... That is horrible. If you saw the videos, I don't, again, I don't encourage you to go see them because I think, and they're not even, it's not like they're graphic or anything. It's just, you know, in those cars, as they're getting smashed, that there were families in them or whoever, and it's just really bad. And there's still a lot of people in critical condition. You know, once you see kind of the top shot, that's all you needed to see to understand how bad it was. Uh, it's kind of a once in a, every 10 year kind of pile up. Uh, drive safe. Cannot stress that enough. Please drive safe. Drive just at the, the thing is, is if you, even if it's raining just a little bit and it's this cold, be super careful. Think about all of those semi trucks. Look at that scene and then think about that. Think, watch behind you. Think to pull off the side or get out of your car if that happens. One thing I was watching when I was watching the videos of all of these people piling up, they sat in their car as more cars came behind. If it was me, the second my car came to the stop, I don't care if I hold up traffic. If it's like that, where there's a jackknife truck, I'm getting immediately out of my car and I'm running to the side of the road. I don't know if anybody else watched those videos and thought the same thing. There were people who just sat there and most likely lost their lives because of it. 
I would have got out and if the car was messed up, I would have broke a window and I would have hopped out the front window, back window, whatever it was, because if I did that, that means there's more people behind you. Think about that. If you're ever in a pile up like that, and I hope that's, you know, if this ever helps somebody in case they do, remember there's going to be more coming behind and there very well could be semi trucks that weigh tens of thousands of pounds and they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop and they're not going to, it doesn't matter if you're in a seven or eight seater, you know, uh, some sort of big suburban, those suburbans were crushed like they were eggs. That's how bad it was. Dex, you don't, you, you guys, uh, what is your weather like there? Are you still warm? Do you guys have good weather right now? I don't, I didn't know if, um, if this is actually affecting you. I know that it's, it's snowy and crazy here. Well, we were supposed to have uh, winter weather um, coming up this weekend. I think it was like Sunday or Monday we were supposed to have snow, but then it went away. So I think it's going to be colder, but we must be just, it must be staying above us. Yeah. Kind of unfortunate because I really would love to see like snow here, not 20 inches, but you know, an inch would be nice. So I, uh, you know, I, I love snow too, but I, when you're grown up and you have to take care of other people, it's like. I don't, I actually don't like snow that much. I, it's just like, I've been stuck in it too many times. I've had to put on chains too many times. I guess I'm kind of a Scrooge when it comes to snow. Now, um, once you've been stuck a few times and like almost freezing to death, it's just not fun. Uh, especially if you've ever, I've always lived on a hill of some sort. And it's like, if you live on a hill, you're screwed. Anyways, um, Wes says we had a flatbed Oh, we had a flatbed in that pileup, lime green. So you know somebody or your company had a truck in that pileup. That's really bad. I'm sorry so much, Wes. I hope everybody's okay. Uh, Gone Girl 77 says, LOL, acupillations. Acupillations, yes. Yeah, thank you for pointing out my uh, perfectness, right? Uh, prayers, love, work, and love, and prayers, and work, uh, thank you, Lisa K23, stuff's happening everywhere, says Gone Girl 777, hold the line, all things Athena, I love your name too, uh, all things Athena, I love it, internet issue tonight, uh, too cold, I guess, I don't know, uh, make sure if you are over on DLive to refresh, Martin Benjamin says, another great show, guys, thank you, and thank you, Martin Benjamin, you always pop in and just say compliments or whatever you just always pop in and say something nice so thank you i appreciate that martin and then this is huge twitter suspends veritas for violation of rules somewhere it says uh veritas <clears throat> presents itself and this is obviously this is actually sputnik so keep that in mind it says presents itself as a non-profit journalism enterprise investigating and I love how they quoted all of this. Investigating corruption, dishonesty, self-dealing, waste, fraud, and other misconduct in both public and private institution, which they have done. It says on Thursday, uh, Twitter moved to, to, to suspend the account of Conservative Raja Group uh, called Veritas for uh, violating platform rules against posting private information, also while well locking down the account of its founder, J. O'Keefe. Now, okay, they have something big, I'm guessing. Um, Dex, do you, that's kind of like, I wonder, I, I know it's hard for us to say this. We'll probably put it on our, uh, on our alert or on our website. What did he post? That's what I'm wondering. And what are they afraid of him posting? Do they know that he's, they're probably watching that guy. You would think of all the people they watch, they are probably watching him and his group more than anybody. Especially, think about what he posted before. He posted Dorsey himself, uh, somebody who videoed one of their actual employee meetings and him talking about uh, basically taking out the, the former prez and taking out everyone like them. They, they said that, right? Think about after he posted that. It's like, he they're going into, I man, they could go into everything. They have the ability to get into his entire system, I'm bet. They have millions of dollars to have people hack or frame or maim. <laughs> Freaky. I mean, if you are J.O. Keefe, like, ugh, you are 
probably you man that guy's that guy's got some serious cojones it says wow twitter is just locked down j o'keefe's and the vernhaus account for reporting on uh fb vp guy rosen and his statements that uh facebook freezes comments in places algorithms think there may be hate speech this is some this is like they take people out like that Oh, man. Wonder what was coming. You guys know what to do. What do you guys think about that? And then Gilly, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bates here, the Bates Motel over here. It says, and his war on cash suffered partial defeat at the European court. It says major financial institutions such as Visa and MasterCard, along with the International Monetary Fund, uh, billionaire Billy, and the U.S. Treasury have been lobbying for cash to be abolished worldwide and replaced with digital-only currencies. How is he involved in every asset? It's like he's above the governments and he's like, I want the world to be ruled like this. He's involved in this too. This is this is like super scary. Why do you why do you care? You're a citizen. You are a citizen business owner and somehow you are lobbying for all this basically control stuff. What are you doing? How is like how is this okay? I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter who you are. Like why are you what are your qualifications? Uh, apparently everything. Apparently that money gave you every honorary degree possible. I don't understand. Why do you care that we have all of our transactions digital? Again, this was a good thing though. Apparently uh, there was a, a slight defeat here. Dex, can you explain what happened here? I, don't, I know that you've got uh, your hands full there, but... Can you explain what happened as far as why they got defeated uh, with this whole cash-only society world and, and what happened in this instance? And it looks like you are on the phone still. Hey Adam, I'm here. Sorry. Okay. Um, the whole the whole cash thing. You know, I was kind of surprised. I don't know if it's uh, what exact why exactly, other than you know, there's still some angle of the uh, you know probably a tug of war with the banking system right now about who's going to be the one that's in control of the cashless uh, society or the cashless you know digital world, digital cash world, right? And and I'm I'm wondering if they just didn't buy in. Uh, or want to buy into, you know, the people that were pre presenting it or proposing it. And, you know, it needs to come from someone else. That's the only thing I could think of. Um, well, I mean, ultimately, like... we, we know there's something coming um, and we know there's something wanted. And, you know, it, digital only makes sense. I mean, why would you even bother with, you know, redoing everything again with paper? Not that we necessarily want to see that happen, but just knowing if they're trying to do a reset or do some sort of global currency, it would make sense that it's digital. Well, yeah, but why is he involved and why are they lobbying for this? I just don't understand. It's like, this is like... Well, I think he likes to take, you know, I'm the king of digital, right? He's, you know, I founded Microsoft, so therefore I, I'm i probably the biggest authority on anything computer related in the world. That's me, right? And I'm speaking of, of Gil Bates there, so... Um, yeah, I think that's probably why he's sticking his nose into this foray and probably because of his uh, his connection and rank that he probably has a lot of influence. Do you think it would be beneficial to him, though, because his programs and his computers would be used to, to control that? Oh, yes. I mean, I'm sure whether it's whether it's his, his systems or not, because, I mean, I guess he still owns it. He doesn't necessarily operate anything over at microsoft but yeah uh it certainly would be beneficial uh, to whoever is the the leaders that are bringing this in and and designing and owning it right that's going to be um 
Yeah, and that's probably why, you know, maybe he got defeated at the first round. Maybe, like, you know, they're looking for someone else. I don't know. Wow. It's incredible. Uh, now, hopefully that never happens. I really, 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 really hope it never, ever happens. Because uh, that's no, I mean, that's getting rid of privacy. That's why they did the Banking for All Act and everything else. Uh, if you guys want to support us in a different way and protect yourself against people like Gilly Bates, uh, I would highly recommend getting a virtual private network. It stops companies, governments, uh, people from basically data logging you. Uh, also, it can hide your IP address and your real address. Not only that, it can help you protect you when you are using Wi-Fi or any public network. Uh, it can also help protect your identity as far as your your online presence. So again, you can go to NordVPN at marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Uh, again, this is also good. One account, which you get an extreme discount if you go through our, our link, uh, and help us, you'll actually give us a commission of that as well. It will actually work up to six devices. So you can use it on your computer, uh, your wife's computer, your husband's computer, your kid's computer, your kid's cell phone. These also work for cell phones and devices. So if they have a tablet that they always use, you want them to be private. You don't want them out there. And it's as easy as turning an on and off switch. They literally have a little on off uh, mode so you don't have to do anything technical. You just turn it on and it hides, hides your uh, IP, which is essentially your identity online. All right. And then uh, let's see here. Remember to use that code Marfugal, by the way. If you do, you get upwards of 70% off on their uh, longest plan, the three-year plan, or you can get a discount on even just a month or a uh, trial. Okay, uh, let's get to our next caller, but first off, Pew Pews. Is that really? Peepaw's dead. I, I almost said Pew Pews. Peepaw's dead. Uh, thank you. It says, best to Adam, Dex, and the Mons. Thanks for all of you. Edgy Whalen, it's so nice to see you tonight. Uh, Duck Hawk, all of the old school. Mockingbird, 1011. Thank you. Uh, Bear Claws, Nikitai, thank you so much for your support tonight. Maui Racing Realtor, Gone Girl, love to all. And Nana Debra, thank you so much for the Ninja Gini. Bates has a patent for mining digital currency uh, by Microdot VAX through Microsoft. Patent 202080806. That okay, that would explain a little bit more there. Uh, and then we have Cherahonky Gear or Cher Cherahonky Bear. Thank you so much. Lots of new names as well. Griffey, uh, Hexagonal Peach, Graceful Impact. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, we've got Lurker One, Nana Debra, The Merchant, Joe Adams, Natural Born Rebel, Mama of Six, Rizar, Island by the Sea. Well, that's scary. Uh, that's this. That's awesome. Island by the Sea. Uh, I O D Will Joe Blow. Is that really? I think he spelled it Jow Blow. That's pretty funny. We are all useless eaters in Billy's eyes. <laughs> yes, that is totally useless eaters. Didn't he say that, or where is that from? I feel like that is an actual quote. Matrix style bracelets turn humans into batteries. We're gonna get into that right after this next call. Let's see here. By the way, uh, live uh, PayPal donors, Dean G, thank you, thank you, and thank you, uh, Dean G. Thank you so much for your your uh, support over there. Obviously, it is uh, it takes a lot less, so thank you. That is appreciated. Zippy Moons, thank you for your support over there, and Christina K. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Uh, Zippy Moons, I appreciate that. Seriously, thank you. Uh, Cold Cracker. Do we have Cold Cracker online? It doesn't sound like it. Yeah. Cold Cracker, what's going on? You Mark. are live on Marfugal News. Hey, how you doing, pal? Hey, so uh, we've got some, a link here. What is the what is the link? It looks like it's a, a, a video. Yeah, the, uh, the, first, the first video that I sent... Uh, it was interesting. It was, uh, the other, the other night, the moon was out. It was, it, it was the moon and not the sun, but I ended up, uh, it just looked just, you know, bright. It looked like it was full for 
I don't know, about five days there. Didn't look like the pier to change any size and I mean, or, or shape, I should, I should say. So I, I decided just to put the phone up and, you know, take a short clip of it and wait until you see it. It's interesting. When you view it, it's pretty, actually pretty cool. Now, and this is the moon, right, Cole Cracker? Yeah. Okay, we're watching Looking it Looking around it. Now, could wait, could you see that in person, or is is that... Yeah. No, well, no, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't see it, I didn't see it in, in motion like that in person. And I thought, well, maybe it's the phone. I, I continued, there, there's more to it. So I zoom in and out just to see, like, like, what's going on here? Is there something wrong? You know, and uh, I just thought it was pretty, pretty interesting. And then just in case, if there's anything else, you, it looks like it's changing shape almost. Yeah, it does. And, and, and the, the video was long, so I had to cut it. But it does change shape in the video. I could send the whole, you know, the whole video then on the website. You know what is also weird? Why do we have so many people saying that something as simple as the moon, which the moon is supposed to look different almost every night, but it has these cycles, right? Why are so many people my age and above saying that the sky and some of the stars and the moon and the sun, why are there so many thousands of people that are like, this is not what it used to be? Why are there so many people that question it? I don't think it's just because of online yeah. stuff. I think it's, I, I just think it's weird. Like people say that the sun, yeah. ri uh, look at the uh, Inuits, the Inuits in uh, Canada, the, the, the ancient tribes on both sides of the country said that our skies have changed, that the lineup, I mean, if you think yeah. about earthquakes like 2004 and 2011 put us off axis. So something has changed. Something has definitely changed with Today. our world. Do you think so, Cole Cracker? Today. Well, yeah, today w I was uh, sitting in the vehicle. I had my wife. We had a, we had an appointment because she's uh, almost, she's, you know, going to be, we're going to have a son here shortly. I mean, during this, it's pretty tough, you know, so I'm going through a lot. We are, but. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, she's, she's doing eight weeks. So it's like, oh boy. Hey, by but, the way, uh, we're sitting in the before, vehicle. before we yeah. talk about this, I just want to say, hey. Uh, seriously, congratulations, Cole Cracker and Mrs. I hope you guys are doing really well. I'm going to be uh, praying for you and your son, and hopefully everything happens to just perfectly. I know it will. Uh, so thank you, and I just wanted to take that time. And if, if we can, anybody, please send positive uh, vibes, prayers, and everything towards Cole Cracker and his, and his new son. Um, okay, so what, what's up with the picture? What The moon behind yeah, the power lines. Cool. Uh, well, no, I actually, it was the sun. It, the, the sun what? has been, you know, because of storms or whatever, been blanketed it, I guess, for whatever, most of the time or most of this event that's been going on. But, but today it was, it was pulsating. You can, I mean, you can clearly see it because it was, you know, it, it was bright. It wasn't bright enough that you can't look at it, but with the cloud coverage, it was pulsating. So I just looked into it a little bit and, uh, found out that there is a, a coronal mass ejection that uh, faces that actually is facing us, and it that's what's causing all these major earthquakes. It was within the last couple of days from the ninth, and then today was another one. So face and that thing was turning towards us. So that yes, it's, yeah, I mean that could couldn't that my bones. that could also uh, possibly affect the weather as well. I mean we're getting all of this crazy stuff going on on top of all of uh, the seismic activity, as you mentioned. Uh, well, Cole Cracker, uh, again, thank you for calling in and, and thank you for sharing these. We're going to share these with the Fugle fam so you can actually access Cole Cracker's video and uh, these photos so you can investigate for yourself on our website. At the very bottom, it goes caller info, and then each of the callers uh, and the, the summary of their call, their links, anything that they have will all be there at marfuglenews.com under Dew Mountain. Uh, thank you, Cole Cracker. It was nice talking to you again. Yeah, uh, 
I have one, one last thing. I do appreciate, you know, everything, you know, the fam. Uh, it, it's tough no matter what people are going through. You, you got to stay positive no matter what. Stay positive. Just keep thinking of something. If it's negative, make it a, make it a positive. And them pictures that I sent, you have to flip them upside down. I didn't get to do that when I sent them to Dex, but you have to flip both of them upside down and look at them. And it will it will it will creep you out. All right. Well, There's thank images in both of them. All right. Th- well, thank you. And uh, again, I, I have a, a I have a simpler, more advanced way of uh, doing that. Uh, thank you, Cole Cracker, and you have a great night. Anyways, uh, let's continue. Uh, <clears throat> Matrix-style bracelets turn humans into batteries. In a move that will give chills to fans of the dystopian movie The Matrix, scientists have developed a wearable device that could use the human body to replace batteries. Oh, that is chilly for sure. It says, echoing world-domineering robots' uh, use of enslaved humans in the 1999 cyberpunk movie... U.S. researchers at the University of Colorado Boulder have created an environmentally friendly gadget that harvests body heat and converts it into energy. If that is, that is just, I don't even think people should even invent something like that. Think about that. Uh, tech lovers could power their own watches or fitness trackers by wearing a stretchy ring or bracelet containing a thermoelectric chip that converts heat into electrical energy according to research published in the journal Science Advances. It says the idea will sound familiar to lovers of the iconic film starring Keanu Reeves, where humans are trapped in the Matrix, simulated reality while hooked up to machines to provide electrical power for robots that have taken over the world. Really? (laughs) Don't want to see this. Thermoelectric devices can provide continuous power to wearable devices and could potentially replace batteries in the future, said the paper's senior author, Jin Lang Zhao, it says told the Thompson Routers Foundation in emailed comments. It says, quote, we hope this technology could, at least partially, solve the pollution problems of electronic waste. He said, adding that the tool is fully recyclable. It says the device generates about one volt of energy per square centimeter of skin covered. That is like, that's spooky. So one volt of energy per square centimeter. That's actually a lot. I mean, couldn't, if they're covering a a whole body. Dex, did you think about that? Wait a second. Like a 12 volt battery would be 12 centimeters of skin covered. Am I am I doing that right, or am I totally off? That's creepy. It says, well, more research is needed to increase the amount of power produced and allow for mass production. The gadgets could be on sale in five to ten years. That is very, very, very creepy. And then, of course, we have alien hope as signal from habitable planet found by scientists. Scientists may have discovered a new Neptune-sized planet with a habitable orbit of one of Earth's closest stars. It says the body, which has yet to be named and is being referred to currently as Planet Candidate. Really? It's being referred to as Planet Candidate is an Alpha Centauri, a binary star system, 4.37 light years away from Earth. In a paper published in Nature Communications on Wednesday, an international team of astronomers using the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope, did they really just call it Very Large Telescope, VLT? In Chile, Brown uh, found a bright thermal imaging signal coming from the habitable zone of Alpha Centauri A. It says a habitable zone covers a range of distances from a star of which liquid water could exist on a world's surface, 
an indicator that it could harbor alien life. In the massive cyber... (sighs) Just going to move on. The company behind Fortnite just made it shockingly easy to create lifelike people. Realistic looking humans are becoming easier and easier to make from thin air. It says before it reached the mega hit Fortnite, Epic was known for creating one of the most popular video game engines in the world. It says which serves as the backbone of countless games you love. The Unreal Engine. Of course, I've played games and probably you have too. Uh, Unreal is... is uh, I mean, you're talking about uh, Doom, you're talking about uh, uh, Fortnite, you're talking about uh, all of the shoot. I mean, half of these shooter games use this, uh, and I want to say uh, Half-Life too. No, maybe not. It says, while Fortnite is defined by its cartoony meme violence, the Unreal Engine has been celebrated for pushing bounds of visual realism. It says, and now Epic is sharing its latest breakthrough on its engine, with a feature called Meta-Humans. Meta-Humans are highly convincing, completely digital people. The twist? It says, while high-end digital characters can require a month or more to create, an artist using Meta-Humans can construct them in mere minutes. This is how they will make... Oh my gosh, look at that. No way. Look at this. That's a digital person. The, where this is going is you're talking about creating fake videos of people saying things. I mean, just like, oh, man, talk about, um, uh, what do they call it? Dex, do you, I'm trying to think of, oh my gosh. I don't know, but I just thought of Dex Cam just got a whole lot better looking and younger. <laughs> Yeah, Dex looks like Brad Pitt, uh, you know, mated with um, with Brad Pitt. In a video above, you can see just how convincing the meta humans look. Their skin ranges from porcelain to freckled to wrinkled, sun weathered leather. Uh, when they speak, their lips don't appear to pop out from the model as so many artificially generous uh, faces do, but are clearly connected to the skin and muscles through the entire face. It says, and each individual figure simply looks splendid, regardless of where it falls on the spectrum of gender or race. It says an equal amount of attention has been paid to any type of protagonist you're looking to create. In fact, the spokesman tells us that Epic is able to generate such a diversity of faces because it's actually scanned people's faces from around the world, integrating the data blended and anonymously into this tool. How did they scan these people's faces? Maybe they hooked up with a face app in Russia and just took all of ours <laughs> because, you know, Russia owns all of our faces, right? At least yeah, that's exactly what they did. And it's not necessarily them. I know this because of prior, prior work in the industry. All of the photos that have ever been uploaded, whether it's to, you know, to Facebook or other places, all of that's been indexed and it's, and it's been indexed for um, these algorithms to use. Uh, we were looking at technology back in the day, many, many years ago, that would look at all these indexes and try to figure out how to detect a, an apple from a coffee cup, from a pencil, right? And so all of those photos are the same photos that are full of people's faces and they were all accessible. So when you upload uh, your face or your kids' faces or anything to social media, just realize that some other company is grabbing those faces and possibly uh, your kid might end up as the next NPC on uh, GTA 6. Pretty crazy, huh? Uh, This is kind of a look or a screenshot of what the program might look like. Look at the hair on this. This is absolutely stunning. That looks like a real dude. Looks like a real dude who plays GTA 6. It says the Redalt... The Redalt... Redalt... I'm... I'm smart. The result is a digital character that Epic admits will not completely fool you into thinking it's real. The teeth in particular could use some work, I think. Uh, But that still serves as a captivating human surrogate for games and apps. Very few video games pay so much attention 
uh, of a human face. Games such as NBA 2K franchise requires countless hours of motion capturing uh, and animation for a human face. That is nuts. So we are going to see a whole lot more of that in the future. Okay, uh, Dex, let's get on our, our next caller here. We've got, uh, uh, by the way, Kelly2334, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Uh, massive support there. I really do appreciate that. And then, of course, we have Mark, a, f- a first-time caller, military objects in the sky. If you want to call in, the number is 224400 marf Again, 224400 marf uh, what's going on? You said Hello, Mark. military objects in the sky and AI. Yes. Um, it, this was just today. I, I saw it with a friend. I was pointing it out to him. I did give you a, a little bit better. First of all, I'd like to put my heart out and my prayers to those in Texas that had been in a pileup like that. I've been in drove, drove through situations like that, and my heart goes out to them. Um, you gave some of the greatest advice out there, and that is to get out of your vehicle look down where the traffic is coming and get off the road. That's about the best thing people can do in a situation like that. But um, going on, I'm 65. I retired a disability, 22 years military, and uh, 18 and a half years with Department of Justice uh, DEA. I was a pilot. I did surveillance and and these things. I've flown about every helicopter and small fixed wing out there uh, as part of my job. What I saw today was just blew my mind. It, 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 it took my pants off. I was in a house out, oh, 12 miles outside of the uh, city and uh, <clears throat> where they build homes and they just clear out a little plot and they build a home out there, and out, like almost out in the middle of nowhere. I was in the house and I was talking to this guy and I, one of the things that I always do is I'm always looking at the sky. I, when I get out of the car, I don't necessarily look where my car is. I'm looking up what's up in the sky. And that's what I did at this time that blew my mind. And the first thing I saw were two G4s. They must have been brand new aircraft flying in formation. Uh, they're the ones with the engines on the wing, on the back of the aircraft, not under the main wings. Uh, that's done there for a lot of different reasons. But there is two of them flying in formation. Now, the only people that fly those kinds of aircraft in formation are probably like the CIA or uh, the military or something like that. Uh, you don't see that regularly with civilians doing that brand new aircraft and outside of the one window was a black window and I recognized it right off the bat inside on the other side of that window were high tech cameras. I know I've, I don't know what they have now today, but it's gotta be pretty good because 20 years ago when I was back, I thought we had good stuff then flying in formation, a 30 degree bank turn climbing in formation. I said, wow. And the next thing I looked up and I saw three other objects I don't know if they were looking at us or if they were looking at these other objects, but they were not planes either or helicopters that I could tell by the way they were flying. The one was looked appeared to be a drone way up high. It was uh, green and orange, and there was another uh, rectangular device that was flying opposite of the planes, like they were circling to see it or looking at me. I don't know which. But it was rectangular. It was about the size of a car. And it, it was all lit up with uh, orange and bright blue colors. I saw an orb out there flying. And uh, this drone and these two aircraft totally blew my mind. And I'm calling my friend over. Hey, look at this. Look at this. He picked up the two jets flying in formation about 5,000 feet quiet. Not a not a sound in the air. And also um, and then, one of the other. Uh, by the way, people this, are this asking. Drone. This was in Florida, correct? Yes, Florida and Live Oak. Okay, perfect. A lot of people are asking. happened today. Happened today. Yeah, it happened today at about, um, what was it, uh, 5 o'clock. And uh, I called it to his attention. He was on the phone. But people just don't look up. They, yeah, yeah, I see that or whatever. But the significance of that. And it it, it brought to my mind uh, AI. And that is um, the... uh, when you're talking on the telephone, when you call the utilities company, when you call the phone company, you call the uh, whoever uh, to turn on or turn off or anything, they, what do they always tell you? This is a recorded line. It may be recorded. It, trust me, it's being recorded. That that recording is going into a computer, and that computer and that recording is going to the uh, the cloud, if you will, for lack of better words. 
Now we know our, our voices can be dictated and printed out. We all know that. We watch it on TV with text. There's not a person typing that behind the TV. That's done by AI. And what, what is happening is what I think I'm seeing, and it brought it to my attention on TV today, the big thing now is race, ISM, if you know what I mean. And they're actively trying to identify, categorize us, segregate us, and doing uh, demographics on us to identify who we are, who we support by listening to these telephone calls that are recorded, that, are, that information is not private, and other means that are available out there. And they're building a, um, uh, a scenario on us. I think the bottom line here is what they're first going to try to do is take our voices away and are identifying those individuals that don't follow a party line, particular party line. And uh, it's getting pretty scary out there. These devices that I saw today, I I, ha I know what the two planes were, but these these uh, three other, and I, I don't know what an orb was. I don't know what the orb was up there doing, but the other one looked like a uh, drone and the other one looked like some kind of space vehicle. Now, <clears throat> when, when I first went out there, the first thing I did is I, I noticed their flight path. Everything was slow moving like in circular direction. When I called my friend over and I started pointing to the planes and pointing to this and pointing to that, they started to move and scatter. Um, you know, the quickest way you can get out of line of sight is climb high and far away is what this one did or continue or, or continue to climb and uh, go straight. The, all their flight paths had changed except for the orb, continued to uh, fly by a small little white orb. Never seen anything like it and it just uh, uh, stunned me quite a bit. And I just wanted to throw one other thing about another country overseas or my, I'm a grandfather two times around now. My daughter had a baby girl in is I rail and it, they're shut down. I can't get my wife over there. She wanted to be there for the baby. Either the government closed down or the airports are open or the airports are closed and the government is open. But either way, we've been trying to get my wife into Israel for like a month now. And I'm fearing that we're not going to be able to get my daughter and uh, the child out of Israel because of the complete lockdown they have been going on out there and it continues to go and it continues to go. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So, And I just wanted to pass that along to your audience. There's a lot to unpack there, Mark. Mark, by the way, Kahaja Fly Girl says, are you single? <laughs> Apparently she, a lot of people <laughs> look, said, uh, I, I saw another comment that said, now this is exciting. Uh, so by the way, Mark, I, I not only that, I, I believe you because another thing that a lot of people have reported, especially in Florida, just two days ago, we actually reported, which the news and everybody else reported, that they tested a Trident missile off of the west, uh, off the East Coast. I actually got it confused with the uh, California Trident missile that was tested a year ago. Now, I knew it was different, but I thought it was California again. This time it was in Florida. Uh, Florida had not only that going on, but it has a lot of governmental stuff here. Even in one of the official pictures of the item, which is supposed to be the Trident, you actually see something uh, in the same pictures like these weird orbs. So I don't know what they're doing over there, but Florida has had more sightings in the last week than we've had all year. I mean, we've had so many different emails from people in Tal uh, I'm sorry, I believe Tallahassee, uh, people in uh, off of the, the intercoastal. There were at least two emails from people that live on the intercoastal saying that they saw these crazy, weird things in broad daylight. And I'm thinking, what the heck is going on in Florida? Well, I, I, well, I can, what it tell you is the government does know about it. If it's not part of theirs, it's, it's something else from some other area. And uh, they are uh, disclosure is coming, and they are trying to prep the people on that. And this is no... A coincidence that uh, these things are making themselves known to people. Uh, I, I I don't disagree with you. And by the way, I also wanted to ask you: you, uh, what do you think of Elon Musk telling everybody to use uh, Signal? Do you think that's because of what you said just a minute ago about how uh, going into phone phone messages and, and phone conversations? Absolutely, uh, Signal. Uh, absolutely, I think Signal. I think possibly Telegram. I know Dex could talk more to this. But uh, anything that you can do to go point to point encrypted without uh, the government being able to tag in, that used to be a big thing 20 years ago. The FBI wanted the codes and the, and the pass codes to break into these, uh, like a fax machine, for instance, uh, which is no longer used back then when I was there. Um, and they wanted to be able to crack any communications code. And 
I thought Google was going to hold out, Yahoo was going to hold out, but I guess that was before your time. But then they just started releasing records left and right, and they didn't care. They just ask for it, they give it to you. If they don't have a direct bloodline going straight to the uh, NSA, everything is said and heard is recorded. It's being documented, diced, sliced, and um, we're being uh, identified for what we think and what our voices are, because I think that these F camp may be holding it's going, to, it's going to let's put it this way it's going to be holding somebody it's going to be holding one group or it's going to be holding another group but either way somebody's going in there well, let me let me ask you this question again it, go back to the very beginning what did you say you're uh so a lot of people again thank you for your service what was what was your background again you said f- 15 years or how many <clears throat> my background yeah, my background was 11 years active guard, 11 years, uh, 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 11 years military full time, 11 years guard, and then after that, I did 18 and a half years with the Department of Justice until I got injured on a job. 18 and a half years on a job, full disability. I've been flying since 1980 for the government, pretty much in all kinds of aircraft. Um, it's uh, doing surveillance, you know, two bad, bad guy and a good guy on the ground are doing a deal. You don't, you, you follow the bad guy to uh, wherever he's going the house because you want to find him. But he's looking around behind him to see if anybody's following him. So the ground team backs off and we pick it up from the air. We're called the eye and we tell him, we, we bet him down for the guys on the ground, show him where they went. They're up search warrants, blah, blah, blah. But people don't look up. People don't look up. And there's a passage in the Bible that says, raise your head, look up. For your redemption come nigh, and I think we need to be getting our heads wow. up out of our butt, get on the line, and pay attention to what's going on. That you know that is so scarily true. Nobody looks up. You don't think because you, when you do look up, you see planes, but you don't ever think about being watched from above. And guys like you were flying above, and they you people do whatever they want because they don't think anybody's there. That is so freaky, is it not? Absolutely. Yeah, and we and when I stepped out, I looked up and I saw those two jets flying in formation like that. That is a lot of money. Those pilots, they just want to get up there and fly, or they have to fly. They're they're burning JP four up there as much as they can, all the flight time they want. And so, even if they're not on a specific mission, they just might be snooping around and filming for fun and come across something that they hadn't seen before. And uh, that's how they pick up a lot of things out there. Wow, that is awesome. Well, again, in, in, but the way you even talked, the way you spelled things out, and, and obviously you've watched for a while. Uh, thank you for being considerate about how we say things and stuff. Uh, thank you. The, but you're you're exactly the kind of people that watch, and uh, so that's why I laugh when people say, you don't know any military. We have tons of people just like you that have served their country and that are asking questions and want to say, they're all going what the hell you know what is going on here and they know from the inside out that things are changing and in a rapidly scary way well thank you uh thank you mark i would i would would just like to add one other thing is that when people are talking on the telephone watch what they say don't give up their stuff don't give up how many guns they got where the stash is whatever because people are listening it's not something that you you want to keep that to yourself unless it's the closest confidant that you have that you've developed a uh strong relationship with otherwise they're listening and they're identifying who people are to watch what you say on the phone and i I commend it all these people out there are standing up for their rights i'm doing it i don't much care anymore i'm 65 but um we've got to be aware that we are being listened to and watched all the time mark amazing call thank you so much you have a wonderful night uh, we will be in touch in the future. Have a great night. Be safe. Be prepared. And Marf out. That was Mark from Florida. A uh, great call. Again, um, I am most like uh, Mark. I hope that you're around. Uh, I I do want to talk. I want to talk to you about some of the old older stuff because that fascinates me. Uh Let's get more into some, uh, oh, oh, speaking, this is perfect. Okay, perfect timing for this, too. So if you've never heard of an e-deck bag, just exactly what Mark was saying as far as being listened to, being tracked, uh, geo warrants where they track where your phone has been, and you don't even realize it. All of those things are going down. I would highly recommend getting an e-deck bag. This is the brand that actually 
sells these as evidence bags to three-letter agencies like DEA and, and uh, of course, CIA, NSA, um, because they can put a bad guy's laptop in one of these things and no one accesses it. There's no signals going in or out. What's better, though, is if you have your phone or your devices in here so they can't have their GPS sending in and out. Uh, again, if you don't know about the, the 9 one chip inside your phone it can be turned off remotely they did that so they could rescue you right say you're unconscious on the side of a mountain uh there are certain powers that be that can actually turn your cell phone back on or at least to turn that chip on to try to track you down pretty freaky stuff uh but on top of that there are now things that are straight up in your newest update on your phone if you didn't know uh, at some point last year you were uh, given an update, no matter what phone you have, that makes CV trackable. So you could you can go in there, turn it on, and then it shows you all the other people that may have had CV around you. The negative part of that is people are voluntarily going, yeah, track me, track me where I go. Don't get that. And some others don't believe that that is actually uh, has the ability to be truly turned off, even though it's off by default. But that's up to you. That's up to you to figure out. Again, if you don't want any of that, I would go to markfuglenews.com slash edec and go through the actual brand name, uh, the Faraday bags like this, and you can stop all signals from going out or in. Not only that, they even make one that can protect your key fobs, your wallets, anything, so nobody can just remotely come up to you with a device, take your credit card information or anything else. You put your stuff in there, it is off-grid. They also have a clear utility bag. It's actually called the utility bag uh, where you can actually touch your touch screen through it and it's still blocking all signals. Again, use the savings code Marfugal. Don't be traced. All right. Uh, let's get let's get uh, to something funny here. And then we've got Honey Ann after that. So Dex, if you want to get Honey Ann on deck... Uh, they actually have some video. I'm going to show you a funny video. Let's let's uh, show you something actually kind of funny. All right, boom! This is just falling all over the place. Give me that! Give me that! Yeah, we'll just do it like this. That works. Is that supposed to plug in somewhere? All right. You guys, can you see me okay? I can't really see a preview. This looks, this is, this is where it was at, right? Okay. All right. So this is actually a pretty funny video. Uh, this is what people are doing with their cold. Um, of course, uh, it's 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 a. Uh, hold on here. Let me let me. I'll just play the video. You guys will understand. Oh my goodness. Dex, where is this? Is this New York? This isn't New York, right? Uh, honestly, I don't know where. It is. Is, is that a shopping cart? Or a, some sort of sled made with a box? No, it looks like a... It looks like a dumpster of some sort. It, it got airborne. Airborne going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> and he hits the cop. Okay, so I've, I've told this story before. There was... Uh, there, I, I was living in the Central District with my uh, my ex when we were like 20... I, was, I think I was 21. And we had this big freeze that happened in Washington. And the hill was just like this. Uh, we, we were walking down to work. Uh, we lived in the Central District above kind of downtown Seattle, and we worked downtown near Pike Place Market. 
So we are actually were walking five miles in the snow. It was probably six days straight. It was when Seattle had buses going off of, you know, ledges. Uh, we shut down everything for two weeks because, uh, in fact, they shut down all public buses for literally two weeks uh, because our mayor didn't want to put salt and ruin the fish or something like that. Uh, in fact, I want to say, I, I want to say it was still Inslee. I I don't know. This was a lot of years ago. I don't. It seems like it. It should have been somebody else. Somebody else was in office. They were being environmentalists. Maybe it was before Inslee was governor and something else. So, anyways. Uh, there was, we were at the top of the hill and me and my girlfriend were walking and we saw this fir- this one car go over way too fast. Kind of like what happened in Texas where they were driving way too fast and then they hit the top of the hill and tried to slow down and just slowly went down the hill hitting every car. And there was already a police officer at the bottom who slid out themselves, sitting outside with his door open and his elbows on the car, using his loudspeaker. And he's like, he's like, push your brakes, slow down. Another box truck comes flying over the hill and the, the box truck tries to stop last second and then slowly hits every parked car and it's like crash 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 and it's like you know it's he's sitting there in the driver's seat knowing he's about to hit this one knowing he's about to hit this one and the cop is on his loudspeaker like oh my gosh it was so funny the cop is on his loudspeaker like you are an idiot i am going to give you a ticket when you get to the bottom what were you effing thinking? And he's literally using his loudspeaker telling this guy. And so this guy is sitting slowly, not being hurt, drifting, just hitting car after car after car. And he's there's enough time. It's like five minutes of him just slowly drifting and hitting every car. And this cop is telling him that he's getting a ticket when he gets to the bottom. I've never heard anything like it. And then uh, I want to say this was before we all had, you know, phones like we did today we had phones but we didn't have the kind of camera phones we had but it was just so funny i wish i had that because the cop was swearing at him in today's standards it would be like big news the cop was like you're an effing idiot oh my gosh it was so funny but this this is the kind of uh, winner that i think that we are going to have again I, I don't know i have a feeling that this is going to be a cold wet and slippery and deadly winter uh, they say it's going to be a dark, dark winter. Do you have any videos like this that you want to share? You can go to marfuglenews.com slash play my video and we will actually play it for you. Uh, again, I want to do a winter episode where we talk about all of this. So remember, you can actually send it to marfuglenews.com slash play my video. Let's get our next caller. It looks like we have Honey Ann. Dex, if you want to get that going, you can. <laughs> And I will close yeah, and this down. Please don't make a video <laughs> like this just for us. That would be bad. Or do. Right? Or do. Just do it well. safe, <laughs> safely and responsibly. Safely and responsibly, yeah. Uh, peacefully, yes. Peacefully march towards the snow. And we're not responsible for whatever else happens. <laughs> Can't impeach us. All right. Dex, uh, let's get on Honey. Yeah, Honey, Honey Ann is live on, online. Honey Ann, you're live on Marfugal News. Thank you, Tower Bear. Boom. You there, Honey Ann? Honey Ann. Well... I think she's having difficulty with the phone, but she was live. Hang on one second. Let's get her back on. No worries. Melody, 1776, Dawn, 2019. Thank you so much. Tower Bear says, all this crazy... I was tech- unmuted. Wow. Oh, there we go. Hey, by the way, uh, Tower Bear, thank I'm you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Honey Ann, you are live on Marfugal News. <laughs> I said I was unmuted twice, so I don't know what was going on there. How you doing? It's been 100 years, huh? Uh, well, it's nice to nice to hear your voice. Uh, so, what's what's going on here? 
Okay, so I just wanted to inform everybody. I don't know if y'all are aware or not. I'm not going to get up real biblical on you, but on December 23rd this year, um, like in the Bible, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Daniel, it talks about, and you'll see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Well, that astronomical sign occurred on December 23rd, and I took pictures of it. But tonight, the pictures are on another camera, so I had to like take pictures of pictures and send them in. So when, when you pull the pictures up, um, the, the light in the background that you're going to see, it's like a neon purple in the night sky. It doesn't do any justice because it's like a picture of a picture that I sent you, Adam. No, I see that. I see like some sort of pyramid. What state is this in? And this is in Texas. I'm right here by Dallas. Oh, and I'm sorry to hear about the craziness going on there. Um, okay. So oh, no. That is pretty nuts. Do you know where that happened, by the way? Do you know where that's located? It happened in my backyard. It was in my backyard. You know, I mean, I, I was outside looking up at the night sky and, um, you know, but the, the Bible talks about, and you'll see the sign of the sun coming in the clouds, but no, the time isn't completely, you know, over yet. We still got a little bit more time left to go, but that's just telling you how far we are in terms of biblically speaking, that, that astronomical sign occurred already. And, and I didn't hear anybody talking about it. Mm -hmm. Well, so the pictures I'm trying to, I'm, uh, it's, it's harder for me to see because of the, it, you, like you said, it's taking a picture of a picture. What yeah. is this? Is this like yeah. a uh, tower in the in in the front of it? What, what, what you're looking at in the background there, it's it's that that weird light that's in the sky. Okay, that's the night sky. It's around two o'clock in the morning, and that that sign occurred in the sky from like two a.m. to about five a.m. And it it looked like. I mean, I can't tell you it looked like the moon uh, rising or the sun setting because it was neon purple. It was bright, bright neon purple. I'll have to send you all the original pictures. You know, it, it was rushed, so I didn't get to show you, you know, the originals. Like I said, it's a picture of a picture. It doesn't do it any justice, Adam. But, yeah, well, th I would, that astronomical sign did occur. Mm -hmm. Well, I would love to see the yeah. originals. And, I, I, in fact, if you mm -hmm. send us, figure out a way with Dex uh, and take your time and send it to us, uh, we yes. can we can show people yeah. later on this week or or uh, put it sure. attach it to this website. In fact, uh, what we'll do is we'll try to attach it to this show's uh, show. So you'll look for this thumbnail on our our uh, in the future. You're looking back. You're watching the show. Okay. Try to look for that, and then you can look at that. Okay. Well, is there one more thing you want to say before you go? Yes. One more thing I want to say. Think about this. You know, they talk about how we'll have a chip in our forehead or on our on our right hand. We already have a chip on our right hand. Our cell phones are chipped. Oh yeah, no, just I, something to think about. Just something to think about. Oh, I know, and they, they're making cell phones that are going to go into our wrists and into our hands. They're already working on well, prototypes. Well, we've already got chips. We've already got chips in our cell phones, Adam. So when we're walking around with our cell phone in our hand, we're basically chipped in our right hand. Well, and you mm -hmm. should you should really look at what uh, Amazon is is doing to scan our hands. Uh, it's pretty freaky. They're not even going to need to put a chip yeah. in. They're using us as yeah. the chip. I, I get you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you so much, honey, Ann. Thank you, thank you. I know you're busy. You have a good night. God bless everybody. Bye. All right, God bless you as well. Have a great night. But be safe. Be prepared. Honey, Ann Maya has been a part of the Fugle Fan for a long time. Thank you, honey, Ann. I really appreciate you, and thank you so much for sticking around for so long. You're always so incredibly sweet. Thank you so much for your vi your videos and your pictures. Um, send us the originals. And what we'll do is if you're watching this a week from now or a month from now, go back to this uh, website or to this show's website, which again, every show has the archived uh, video, tweets, everything, documents. Boom, go to that bottom and see if we've attached it. If we haven't, that means we didn't get the p pictures. All right. <clears throat> Uh, Dex, thank you, my brother, my internet brother, my internet yeah. brother up from another mother. Great show, brother. You know, and, and Honey Anna has a channel, and I was going to say if she's listening to, to up, why don't you put that together and upload it as a video and submit it on Play My Videos. That way we'll definitely get it out. It'll be a Boom. lot easier. And you can go and find that. Go to our website, and we will connect you to that. And then Lori D, thank you so much for your support. Uh, again, thank you, Haunted Doll, Jules B, Nebraska Panhandle, 29 here, real cold. 29 degrees in the Nebraska Panhandle, jeez. Zippy Moons said, had to spread the joy. LOL, to totally awesome show tonight. Thanks to X-Mods, Adam is truly the bee's knees. Zip, hey, Z2M, Zippy Moons, I, I, 
I don't know if you changed it back. Uh, I wonder, did you change it back because nobody recognized it was you? Because Zippy Moons, you've been Zippy Moons for a long time. Um, Jessica, Tiffany Green, Nikki Karis, inspiring speaker. Thank you and welcome to the Fuku Fam. If you ever see somebody who's new, just make them understand that uh, it doesn't matter what they view or, or how they view things. They're welcome here. Uh, we just want it to be inclusive, but you know, understand that we're all humans. We all make mistakes, uh, that we're all friends here. Thank your mods tonight for making it a, a, a very peaceful place. No drama. <clears throat> um, yes, we have some great, great mods. So I wanted to put together a mod store, uh, a mod show. Uh, some of the mods have been going through a lot of stuff. So I was waiting for, you know, more of them to get back onto the daily thing. I want to put together a mod show of all of the mods channels. Another thing that I wanted to do is to get together with um, with Mark Pyers and Wages World and a couple others. I want to get a uh, I want to work out some other stuff too. Wouldn't it be nice if we had you know guests like Mark Pyers do like a little musical piece or something and do the weather or or, or I'm sorry do like you know a fake traffic thing or. Or have Wages World do a little small segment on solar weather. You know, like the weatherman comes on, but only it's solar weather. Something like that. Um, again, we're talking about it, and, and uh, I'm going to get a hold of them. Uh, again, reach us on Signal, by the way. Wages, if you're watching, or anybody else. Make sure me and Dex communicate through Signal now. Or some of you know some of the other ones like Telegram. All right, uh, mods. If you are in there, I was going to say hi to you guys. Thank you so much tonight. I know uh, it's been really stressful for everybody. Uh, love all of you, Gone Girl. Thank you for your support over on D Live. Uh, thank you everybody that has made D Live an awesome place. Vault One One One. Thank you. Says great show, bro. Marfugal News. The only news I choose. I love Dosh Hounds. Thank you. Unicorn Forest. Really, really bomb master. Everybody that's over there. Edgy Whalen. Amazing people like Serenity PA. Uh, Amy R. End Times. The truth is out there. Uh, Gone Girl. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's go to this. Susan Rock, you rock. Canadian Wolverine, you rock as well. Rose, it's now a time officially for the shoutro. It's not a shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's an outro. Oh my gosh. I, it's an outro. It's a shout It's where we say thank you to everybody that matters you.
Thank you, Crypto Spaceman from Norway. 50 crones. I think that's Norwegian crones, right? Thank you. I don't know what a crone equals, but if it was 50 cents, I thank you. I love all Norwegians since I am part one. is in the house. Jacktronics, Keyshara walks a lot. Oh, bang, bang, pew, 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 mama of three. JN some babies. Recalcitrant. On a rant. Bondstar, one Adam, 12. Somebody special. Mystic Misfit, Hexagonal Peach, and Bombster. Do I sound like Drama Alert? Welcome to Drama Alert. Maui Racing Realtor. Apparently, deleted a message. Supporter tonight, Kelly2334. Thank you so much. Lisa K23, Gone Girl, number three. Thank you. Overall, though, Gone Girl is number one of lifetime. That's insane. Zippy Moons, Tower Bear, Gadja Fly Girl, J Price 130, Nana Deborah, Machina Opus, D Lives Mom. Thank you. By the way, thank you. Seriously, you don't have to do that. You know that. Thank you. Susie P. <laughs> 